Okay, let's talk about our wall section. And the <clears throat> the um, author of the prints that we had didn't doesn't show the cutting plane on the floor plan, but they show it on the on the elevation drawing, which I find to be a little a little weird. But uh, so we're going to create one. So we're going to put one in right here through the window of the master bedroom, and you can kind of uh, scooch it over a little bit so it's not actually center of the window, but it does go through the window. Put that in place, uh, and as you can see, I, I did a little squiggly and broke it. <clears throat> Get it in place, and then pin it so it doesn't move, okay? Because we don't want to be moving this thing around. And so now let's go to our to the actual drawing itself, and you'll have to yeah unpin it to work with it, but. What I did is I put the I put the brakes in, and you click the little squiggly line there, and it puts the brakes in. And I adjusted the brakes similar to what it looks like in the drawing. I went ahead and set my scale at at three quarter inch equals one foot. Uh, adjusted my crop regions in. I set the depth of it. As you can see here, I set the depth so that it does not reach the wall and the door beyond, because I don't want to see things that are you know, inside the room. Okay, now I would recommend that you go ahead and drag this thing into your drawing sheet so that you can see the sizes of your brakes and do you need to adjust your sizes to get the thing to fit on your on your drawing sheet. So go ahead and bring it in there and, and use that to play with the sizes of your brakes. So you're, you're all familiar with doing detail components, so you're going to put a lot of those in. Uh, the truss I drew in, you know, it's three and a half inch wide line, so I drew those lines in. I applied a, uh, let me turn my thin lines back on here. <clears throat> I applied the plywood hatch to my roof sheathing, drew in a line for the airspace, drew the uh, nine and a half inch bat insulation, uh, finished trim fill pattern. Two, I did a two by three for the soffit blocking. Okay, two by fours here, trim one by six, trims, 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 okay. Now, <clears throat> some of you are gonna be upset and that's perfectly all right with me. I'm okay with you being upset about it. But our windows are at the wrong height. And I know I told you all to use what it says on the uh, paper drawings. Six foot ten and a fraction of an inch, okay? Well, what Revit, at least with these windows, determines head height to be is this little line right here inside the window. Everybody else in the industry, when you're talking head height of a window, they're talking the top edge of the actual window jam or frame. Okay, so it's just, uh, it, it's not a boo-boo on my part. It's not a boo-boo on your part. It's something that neither of us knew about when we were installing these windows because, honestly, I had no idea that the Anderson window model considered head height to be this little line right here never even entered my mind until I started to put in my 2 by 12 blocking for the window header and it wouldn't fit so I got to playing around with it a little bit and that's when I realized that the window header is at the wrong location so what do I do I pull in my uh, I move that window down a little bit pulled in my uh, my 2x12 for the window header, my two 2x4s two for the top plates, got them in, and then I pulled my window back up until it touched the bottom of the 2x12, and then I can look over here in properties, and I can see that for the casement windows, the head height is 6 foot 8, 11 16 Now, like I said, when Anderson considered the head height to be like, I, I'm going from memory, but I'm pretty sure it was this little line of the window frame. 
Okay, so that works for the two casement windows. Now what you have to do is pull you a dimension either from, uh, it's, it's probably easiest to pull a dimension from the bottom of the floor up to the bottom of the 2x12. Take that dimension in your mind or write it down and then go to your double hung windows and make those changes also. Which leads me to this section through the front wall. So I want the height, this line right here, to be at the bottom of a 2 by 12, <clears throat> which should be that 6, 10, and whatever it is on the prints, okay? That means you're going to have to adjust your clapboard siding and your stone veneer on the front to meet these new windows here. And then check your shutters that we installed in the previous videos. Okay, because... <clears throat> Excuse me. The head heights on these uh, double hung windows are not calculated the same way the head heights are on the casement windows as, as far as the properties go. So you'll have to measure, measure one and get it figured out and then you can apply that to the other ones. And then of course the picture window here is a little bit different also. Okay, so that took care of that. Um, you're going to add the detail items, the hatch patterns for the plywoods, the insulation, uh, the two by fours, anchor bolt, it's a half inch anchor bolt with a 12 inch hook on it, I believe is what I set it up at. Yeah, 12 foot long or 12, 12 inches long. Um, drew a thick wide line here for uh, my approximate grade okay um, insulation on the inside of the wall and of course turn off visibility of that voided floor area so that's not showing up um, rebar rod rebar ends section view I pulled in a detail pattern or a detail component of a four inch drainage pipe, put that in and then did a masking region inside of it uh, to hide the stone. Now, the, the stone, I had to create a gravel fill material type. And uh, once I get back to the lab, I will have to look up the actual location of the pattern because I had to actually import this one in from AutoCAD. Um, and I'll have to look up the, the actual location of the thing and then I'll put that in a Blackboard announcement for you. But it's just like we created the hatch pattern for the stone wall, the stone veneer. S same process, just have to look, go to a different location to get that pattern. Anyway, I applied that <clears throat> and scaled it to find my gravel fill down here at the bottom. Okay, and then of course you're gonna add all the notes um, and dimensions that are shown on the paper drawings to get that done. And oh, oh yeah, even though they don't show it on the paper drawings, I put in the, uh, the brake lines because it just looks so much more, um, it looks better, so much more professional, okay? And then, We'll hide the crop region once we're done. Okay, see, doesn't it look good with the brake lines? Whew, looks sweet. All right, and then get all your text in. Make sure everything is fitting. You, uh, you may have to play with your, let's see. Uh, you may have to turn on annotation crop over here. To, I mean, you can pull your crop lines in and then pull your annotation crop out. So I'll tell you how that goes once you start putting in your text. And then, of course, that, that goes on that sheet. Mm, I think that's uh, everything I need to talk about on that one. And then we'll hit, uh, hit the next topic. At, oh. There. We'll hit the next video and see where we're going from there, okay?